In A Course in Miracles, we are taught about self-realization using the five aspects of the human being, the higher self, the Holy Spirit, the soul, the ego, and the body to metaphorize the ascension process. Like fingers on a hand, they are all part of one fist. In Egyptian mysticism, we are taught about self-realization using the same symbolism. The only difference is that these subjects correctly understood in ancient Egypt in modern times have been named and historically misunderstood to be gods and goddesses. In examining the papyrus of the five aspects, from right to left, wearing a golden crown is Isis, the Holy Spirit. Osiris, the higher self, the Christ seed Adam, is depicted as green to indicate the position of the heart. Horus, the soul, is symbolized as a falcon as a result of his ability to ascend to great heights. Set, the ego, is symbolized as a mythological dog, and Nephthys, the body, is crowned by a silver chalice to symbolize her contextual nature. Osiris is the higher self, represents the part of you that stays connected to spirit and is the pattern of all that you are as that. The Holy Spirit, or Isis, is the active part of spirit that assists in returning you to your full remembrance of yourself as pure spirit. The soul, or Horus, is the collector of all the data received in the earth plane, who then becomes the informed chooser of who you know you are. The ego, set, is your personality, and Nephthys is the vehicle that allows you the physicality to play out this game. If we use this analogy that you are a vehicle through which God gets to express in the earth plane, the body, Nephthys, would be the automobile, and the ego, set, is your make, model, color, and year. In other words, the ego is how your vehicle is uniquely identified and expressed. And although these aspects are referred to differently in these two works, their words and deeds are eerily similar. And the result, self-realization, is the same.